Linear transformation on bivariate data set. By definition, linear transformation is changing variable using mathematical operation to achieve linearity. Now, there are two types of transformation or linear transformation in this chapter. We call it linear transformation and the other one is nonlinear transformation. So what's the difference between the two? In a linear transformation, if we create a transformation um, or operation when we change any of the variables between EV or RV, there will be no effect on the correlation coefficient or the value of R. And in a nonlinear transformation, your correlation coefficient may increase or decrease in the process. That's why it's called a nonlinear transformation. Now, what types of operation can we use to perform a linear operation or a linear transformation? We can either multiply or add or divide or subtract either our explanatory variable or our response variable, and we will achieve linearity without any effect on the correlation R. However, if we want to perform a nonlinear transformation, we could use exponent to raise either the explanatory variable or the response variable to change or to achieve linearity, or also we can take the square root of either of the variable to change the linearity of your relationship. Now I'm talking too much about linear transformation and uh, later on in this presentation we'll be working on bivariate data and we're going to see how we can achieve linearity given a uh, scatter plot that is not straight or not linear. Now there are several methods in transforming the variable or variables to achieve linearity. The first one is the standard linear regression, which is the original form of our model, y equals a plus bx. We can also perform exponential model or quadratic model, reciprocal model, logarithmic model, or the power model. So what's basically happening here is we're transforming our EV or our RV to achieve the linearity that we are working on in our bivariate data set. And this is how the equation or the model will look like if we transform our model so that it will create a linear relationship between the EV and RV. Now, what are you supposed to learn in this chapter? So I talked too much about transformation on our linear relationship. But in this chapter, we are supposed to learn how to explain what is meant of transforming variables. And also, we should learn how to discuss the advantages of performing linear transformation in a bivariate relationship. And of course, we also need to learn how to perform linear transformation in our model to be able to achieve the linearity that we that we are trying to do in our uh, bivariate data relationship. Now here's our example. So suppose we're trying to uh, work on a data set and the data set that was given to us is a data set between bacterial growth and uh, the number of bacteria present in every hour. And here's our data set, where hours will be our explanatory variable, and the bacterial growth will be our response variable. Now, in creating a model, um, and using technology or using our calculator, we'll be able to find the value of A and B in our model, and it's given by predicted bacteria count is equal to negative 4.2744, which is our y-intercept, and plus 3.9433 times the number of hours, which is our slope. So this is the model that we produce using our calculator. And I'm going to show you how it's done in a little while. Now the question is, how much bacteria is present at 3.75 hours? So we're trying to predict the number of bacteria in uh, this particular um, data set at 3.75 hours. So using the model, given x is equal to 3.75, which is our explanatory explanatory variable, we're plugging it into our model y hat equals negative 4.2744 plus 3.9433 
times 3.75, we'll get a y hat which is equal to 2.024 million bacteria. So the bacteria present at 3.75 hours is 2.024 million. However, if we're going to observe our data set here, at 3.75 hours, which is between 3.5 and 4.0 hours, we'll notice that the bacterial growth is not, it is not matching in our y hat right here. Now, why do you think the y hat is giving us 2.024, wherein we know for a fact that between 3.5 hours and 4 Point zero hours, the bacteria should be between, uh, let's say, 9 million um, bacteria. I'm going to show you a visual representation of what is happening to our linear model and how we can explain this value right here. Okay, okay so this is our data set, the number of hours, which is our EV, and the bacterial growth, which is our RV. So let's check how the scatter plot will look like if we plot this two bivariate relationship in a graph. So here's my graph. Here's ours. I'm grabbing it. And this is our explanatory variable, which is on the x-axis. The bacterial growth, which is our response variable, which is along the y-axis. And if you will notice, the scatter plot that we have right now is not quite linear. And it matches to the fact that our y hat is not really giving us an accurate result. So if we construct our linear or our line of best fit for this scatter plot, you will notice that our LSR, our linear graph right here, is not giving us a linear formation on our scatter plot. Now, to verify how the relationship of our bivariate, bivariate data is, let's check our residual plot. And if you will notice, our residual plot is giving us a parabolic formation. And we know for a fact that if our residual plot is giving us a parabolic transformation or parabolic formation, we know that our LSRL or our model is not the best fit in our data or in our relationship. So you will see visually why we are predicting results that is not really accurate to our Mo or the model is giving us results that's not really accurate based on our data set. And these are the summary or the graphical summary, sum summary of our relationship between bacterial count and uh, the number of hours in our uh, relationship. Our scatter plot shows that it's nonlinear and our residual plot is obviously showing us that our model is not the best fit as our predictor for predicting an outcome based on the LSRL that we had a while ago.